the Prime Minister looked at the people waiting at the Asura gate of his palace and sent them away and returned quickly. Ma'am. I have arranged something to the best of my ability. I have sent people from all directions to find out the damages caused by the storm. I have also sent word to the little saviors that the treasure road should be opened under the responsibility of both of us. Sir. Is there a treasure dungeon near the mansion of the Great Scavenger? Is it true that countless things are piled up in it? The Great Brat once said. If you open it, that mother thinks that a thousand new temples can be built with the material in it. Even I have never been inside that dungeon, mother. Those who go there once do not return alive, said the Prime Minister. Let it go, sir. Will they fetch that mute mother? I am worried that what is within reach will not reach the mouth, said Kuntave. Mother. What do you know about that matter a sea? How did you know? Why are you so excited about her? Said Anurudha. Sir. A few days ago the emperor himself told me about that matter a sea. What? She said she's alive, what? No, sir. He told me the events of twenty-five years ago. He thinks she is dead. That is why his will is disturbed. Did you find out for yourself that the mute woman fell into the sea and died and told my father? Then, how did you know that Madarasi was alive? I thought I'd ask you the same question. How did you know, Devi? Why is that, I'm telling you, the warrior of Vinarkuleta came back to Elam, he said first. Then my brother Aralmazai. Kundave said and covered her mouth with her hand as if she realized her mistake. Goddess. If you don't want to tell me about Prince Aralmas Hivarmar, don't. I completely forget you mentioned that name. No, sir. I came with the intention of telling them everything. I have found that concealing things does no good, but evil. Last night I saw it well. Sir. My younger brother was not swept away by the sea. Pani's Selvan Samudhiraja saved him and brought him to the shore. He is now a Buddha in Nagaipadinam. He is in the Viharam. I went to Nagapatnam just to see him. But I have a suspicion that they know all this. You are right in your suspicions, but Devi, I do not pretend to know. I maintain that I do not interfere in anyone else's business. I have given my men the same order. I believe that whatever they do will be right. Malay Aman Kajum Balar Vilan and I have often talked, I lay Aperditi. If only she had been born as a male child, she would have brought the entire world under the umbrella of the Cholas and given her independence. It is true that I had such thoughts. Although I was born as a woman, I had a desire to fulfill that desire through my brothers. I have given up that desire now, sir. I have decided that women should never interfere in the affairs of the kingdom. See, I made my brother stay in Nagaipatanam Sudamani Viharam and its perversity. Look at the results. Nothing has happened, mother. Will Samathirarajan, who saved Pani's wealth in the middle of the sea, do harm now that he is safe on the shore? Sir. Come at once to my father and dare him thus. Aha. Uh -huh. Does the emperor know, what? The news that Prince Sudamani is in Viharam. I told you only last night, it is as it should be. Puriyi Avalar of Kajumbalar is coming towards Tanjavur with a large force. Goddess. I fear that there will be a flood of blood in the Chola country. I fear that this great empire will be destroyed by fraternal strife. I am praying to Sri Ranganatha day and night that nothing like that should happen. Such is my prayer, sir. I have given up the desire that my brothers should ascend the throne of this kingdom. As for me, I have no objection now to crowning Madhurandha himself. They don't mind, but the people do. The emperor has to live in this world for many more years. But if something happens to him by fate, the entire Chola country will be in ruins that very day. Sir. I am very much afraid that such a tragedy will happen soon. Last night the condition of the emperor became very alarming. That is why I had to tell him that Pani's wealth was safe. But even when told, he did not believe me. He thought that I was just comforting him. 
he is deluded thinking that the spirit is taking revenge on his sons. Oh, my God! What the hell? Tell me in detail what happened last night. That's why I came, sir. I came to ask them for their ideas. When I came to establish the Sundara Collar Hospital the first time, Chakraborty told me that old story. When he had to leave Eza on the island next to him, he told me about Akarayar's daughter who saved him from being a prey to a bear. He told about how he had lived with her for months as if he were living in a dream paradise and then he was brought to Tanjapuri. He saw Karayar's daughter in the crowd gathered at the gate of the palace and asked Aruyur, his friend, to fetch her from them. Said. He said that she was tormenting him in the form of a ghost and that her visits had been increasing lately. Goddess, did you believe all that? As the story told by my father was so amazing, my mind was also very confused. I thought that it might be paranoia that the ghost of a dead woman came and disturbed my father. Then I thought about it and had some other doubts. One night, Venati heard the cry of the emperor and went and saw an image like Pallava or Ila Irani in front of the king. She was shocked to see what was standing there and fell down. From then on, it seemed that there must be some relation between that carrier's daughter and this Pava or Ila Irani. It was confirmed from what Valavaria and Arulm as I said. Sir! Could Nandini Devi possibly be the daughter of that carrier's daughter? Like you, I can only guess. Mother! If we look at the physical resemblance, we must assume so. But can we be sure from that alone? Perhaps Nandini Devi is the last younger sister of Karayar's daughter. There are only three people who know for sure about all this. Who are they, Swami? There is one great bratty Sempian Mathavi. There is something secret in his heart that is tormenting him. But what it is, we cannot know unless he tells it himself. I know that the great bratty told him about the end of the great Kandaratatha. Kandaratatha began to tell me. Before saying two words his breath stopped. Who are the other two, sir? The other two are mute and unable to speak. Sendan is Amuthan's mother and Periane. Of these we cannot learn anything from Amuthan's mother. She has boundless devotion to Sembian Mathavi. As long as that goddess lives she will not say anything. That is why I have been trying so hard to bring her daughter Mandakini from the country of Ela. Aha! Is that carrier's daughter's name Mantakini? When did they know she was alive? Goddess! That's something I've known for over twenty-five years. What? What? Have you known for twenty-five years and not told my father? Sir! Don't you know how much my father was distressed at the thought of her death? I know, mother. I know. You know you didn't tell him the truth. Anurudha heaved a long sigh. His face showed that a struggle had taken place within him and he then said. Goddess! Twenty-five years ago I committed a crime. I tell you now for the first time. Didn't your father send me to look for the fisherman's daughter? The eyewitnesses of that terrible scene told. Tyaga Vidangar said in a trembling voice. That's what I told my friend when I came to Tanjavur. What is their crime in this? Sir! said Kundave. This is the crime, the fisherman's daughter fell into the sea and did not drown in it. A fisherman who had left the boat in that stormy sea found her and put her in the boat and saved her. He came ashore far beyond Kadakare. On my way back I saw the boat going ashore. Who was the woman in it? I also came to know. I asked the boatman to pay a lot of money and take her safely to Ceylon and stay there. He agreed and went. I came back to Tanjore and told him that the sailor's daughter had fallen into the sea. I thought I was doing good to my father and I repented of such a crime. Then I didn't expect it to have such a perverse effect. I lay at Prati Kundeva then interrupted, Sir. What you did was criminal, but you did it with the intention of doing good to my father. Then, have you heard about Akarayar's daughter? She asked. I also left it alone saying that it is better not to stir too much about it. Goddess! When Aromazai fell into the Kaveri River as a child, everyone will say that Mother Kaveri saved him. At that moment, 
it occurred to me that the person who saved her was actually Carrier's daughter. What appeared in their hearts is true, sir. Aromazai came and said so after seeing that Madarasi in the country of Elam. But listen to this strange thing. Do you know what my father thinks? He thinks that the daughter of the fisherman who fell into the sea and died will come in the form of a spirit and take revenge on his people. Last night when there was a heavy storm outside my the storm in my father's heart also gathered pace. He did not sleep the whole night, he did not let me sleep either. He repeated all the old stories. That avenger who fell and died in the sea is now taking revenge on me. She killed my grace by drowning in the sea. She will not leave Kari Kalan unavenged. He often screamed. Will you not take me away while my one son is still alive, Yama? He shouted. I didn't even ask him to calm down. It was because of that that I had to tell him about Aralmas Hivarman being enshrined in Nagipatnam Buddha Viharam. Did the emperor feel any comfort after that? That was not the case, after that the paranoia became more intense. At first he did not believe the news. But after he told me that he had seen it in person, he believed it. He asked why I had not brought him. I told him that I had not got the strength for the journey after the cold, and that I would arrange to bring him soon. But I also lightly told him about the confusion that might be caused in the kingdom by bringing him here. Hearing this, his mental attitude changed to another way. This kingdom has become Yama for my children. If the kingdom ends up not being for them, my sons will be alive and well. That is why I am in such a hurry to bring them here. He said. Dot suddenly another panic took hold in his mind. Last night the palace was torn apart by the fierce storm. Once the disaster struck and rested, my father went into a frenzy. Daughter. I am not going to see Aromazai anymore. I am well aware of the storms and eddies that appear in the lower seas. Due to the storm today, coconut tree height waves will rise on the beach. Far inland, the sea surges and drowns. Nagipatnam will be gone even if Kavarupatnam is taken away like the sea. Moreover, the Buddhist temple between the beach and the canal will not survive a day. That vindictive Kare daughter could not take my son into the sea. Instead she is going to come ashore and kill my son. I'm going to go and stop her and save my son. He screamed and tried to get up. In the effort, he collapsed on the bed. Sir! If my father hears the cry of Vimy then the stone and the mountain will melt. Said I lay Aprati. Her eyes were filled with tears.